the caliper. Um, so it'll still be full of oil to an extent. So just want to try and pour that out and absorb what we can before we actually go ahead and split that. What I'm also going to do is um, just take the um, the pads out for quick inspection um, and just to stop them getting fluid on them when I when I split it. Five mil Allen key. So it's got some of the old copper slip left on this, so um, just to give that a quick clean up with brake cleaner. So your manual will tell you what the tolerance is on these, if they're too thin or not, if there's enough meat left. So this has, this got about three millimeter of pad left. Um, but any sign of damage or uneven wear, I'd recommend just replacing these at the same time. Mine are fine. So working on the caliper itself, I'm just going to give it a quick clean up before I um, try and split the box. Put some soft jaws um, into the vise. I'm going to clamp the caliper in, do it in two halves um, and try and undo these with a 6mm Allen key. Okay. Those were pretty tight. You'd probably struggle to do those without a vice, so it probably is a good thing to try and undo them on the bike, unless you've got a vice with some soft jaws that you can use. So the caliper bolts have all now been loosened. Um, so we're gonna to try to use some compressed air. Now my compressor's not very good, but we'll have a go anyway to remove the pistons. So you can see there's not actually enough room for them all all four of them to come out at the same time um, so I think we're going to have to try and do one side and then the other. And my plan is to try to remove the ones on the half without the without the air inlet first and then come back to these ones because there's a bit more room on that side. Let's have a go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put a bit of wood in like this um, and if I can, that might be just a small bit of wood. <coughs> bleed nipple tight um, and we're going to blow into the banjo bolt hole so uh, let's have a go at this. I've got this rather cheap plasticky air gun um, and the compressor is quite loud so you won't be able to hear while it's on. <laughs> You can see two of them have now popped out, easier than I thought, but clearly the other two wouldn't be able to pop out as well, so I'm going to split it, try and remove these two, and then we'll have a, a look at the other side. Okay, one half done. I'm going to leave these in here to try to keep them, or try to remember what holes they, they came out of. Right, the slightly more tricky side now. So you can see that this here is the hole that connects the air to the to the other side of the uh, of the caliper. So we can still go through the same hole, but we somehow need to block this one up. Also, to prevent this one coming out first. Um, because if that one comes out, there's then not going to be any air pressure to knock this one, or vice versa, because they're connected at a, a, a little channel in the bottom of the caliper. So, I think using the vice is going to be best here. So this is a fitness band that I don't use. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp it in with this over that hole, and hopefully that will just um, block that off enough to get the air pressure up into, into the chambers below here. I haven't done this before, as you might be able to tell. Okay, 
far enough. Not quite far enough. Oh no, one's come out. Two's come out. Easy. Now that's all apart, we want to give this all a proper good um, inspection. Um, so I'll use some cotton buds just to clean out anything. It's actually quite quite clean inside there, but you don't want any dirt and things like that because um, that could block it all up. Um, so again, only, only use your brake cleaner. Don't use anything else other than brake cleaner and lubricate with um, your brake fluid when you start to reassemble. Just one thing I didn't mention, when you are using this compressed air, uh, make sure these are always ideally going into something solid or at very least faced away from yourself. Um, some people put their hand there to catch them. Personally, I don't like um, putting my hand between compressed air and, and other things. So, and I don't like blocking up the hole with my hands and stuff like that. So I like to use other stuff. So yeah, be careful with the compressed air. You don't want these to fire out like a bullet into your face. So on the half um, without the bleed nipple, um, there's a small rubber gasket just there. So just make sure that's in place and in good condition because that's what's um, taking the hydraulic fluid and the pressure across from one side to the other. So that needs to be there to keep it sealed. Um, you can see inside there it's all looking pretty pretty nice and clean. So if you're putting your pistons back in, um, you really need to give these a really good inspection to make sure that they're not pitted or corroded or anything like that. So sometimes you can get some bits off with steel wool and ideally put these back into the same holes that they came out of. These aren't as bad as I thought they were going to be. Um, you can see on that one, I've tried to clean it before. Um, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of pitting around there. Might be able to just about see it. These probably would be acceptable, um, but I'm gonna put new ones in anyway. So whichever job you're doing, whether you're replacing the pistons or just cleaning them up, if you've taken them out and split the caliper, you should be taking these seals out and, um, and putting some new ones in. Um, so let's do that now. So to get these seals out, um, you can either use tweezers or a small screwdriver. Just, just make sure you um, you don't damage like the sealing surfaces in there. It's, it's pretty delicate um, and you don't want hydraulic fluid leaking through that when you're applying the brakes. You can see that the first one's been removed. I'm um, trying to check those channels to make sure there's nothing in there, no debris. Uh, if you're unsure, just give a bit of brake cleaner. Clean around inside the channel with a cotton bud or a Q-tip. American say. So the new seals. So the first thing you should do is um, just a quick sanity check to make sure they look roughly the right size. Don't confuse the, uh, the old ones with the new ones. So this is the smaller seal for the smaller pistons. So I'm just going to get a bit of brake fluid, put it into this jar lid, um, just so I can lubricate as I go, as I put these new seals in. Okay. Okay, you want to check and double check that, that uh, that's seated there nicely, because that's what's holding the pressure back from uh, your brake lever and the outside world. So that's all the seals in. Um, I'm just going to lubricate the inside with a bit of the brake fluid you're going to be using. A little bit onto this as well, onto the, uh, the, the O-ring. So that's all of the new seals put in. Everything's lubricated. I'm happy with the internal condition. So now I'm just going to slip the new pistons in. So even though they're brand new, I'll still give them a check. Make sure they're nice and smooth. A little bit of brake fluid around the outside of them. Okay, one last check that they're all clean inside, and then you want to push these all the way in. Make sure they go in nice and square, otherwise they could pull the seals about. Okay, nice. Push them in square with a bit of wood. Okay. So this one is ready to be put back together. So just make sure all of these ceiling faces are nice and clean. There's no major scores and things like that as, um, uh, as it can leak out otherwise. So check that your gasket 
is in place. Clean up that outside. So these all need to be set to 24 newton meters. So set my torque wrench and double check with your dealer manual what your bike needs to have. Six millimeter Allen. That's all done up nice and tight. Now we just need to put the brake pads back in. Um, I like to put a little bit of copper grease on the back of each of the pads and also a little bit. There's my retaining pin. Again. A little bit onto the retaining pin to stop it from seizing up. Yeah, not a lot at all. And you don't want this to get onto the pads, of course, otherwise it's going to reduce your braking performance. Okay, so it's got this weird little spring thing that just needs to sit underneath the pin. So just push the pads back up against the pistons and make sure that your spring is behind the pin, otherwise it won't stay in. So just do that one up and then do it to the correct torque. So mine needs 19 newton meters and I've got a five millimeter socket. Okay, so that's one caliper rebuilt. Let's go and do the other side and then we can refit the hoses and get the whole system filled up with fluid. Eight mil Allen key. Then hold it upright to avoid the fluid going everywhere. Mm. So uh, this wasn't on the other side. Forgot about that. So um, need to find a new split pin just within the caliper retaining bolt. So um, I'll get another one of those and fit it later. Five mil seems a little bit small for this nut because it is quite tight. And this one has already started, got a little bit mashed up, not particularly tight there, so I might need to consider getting a new one of those later. I think it'll be okay for now. Okay, like the other side, they're pretty tight. Probably not removed since they were initially torqued in Hinkley in 2005. So once again, we'll get my piece of wood, which worked so successfully last time. Need a new compressor. It shouldn't do that. Okay, these are looking pretty good as well, so um, we'll just go ahead and replace the seals. So these pistons are in similar condition. This is probably the worst one. You can see there is a bit of pitting around there. Still not that bad. Usually I wouldn't really hesitate to put those back in, but just due to the fact that these tend to be a little bit sticky, it'll get worse as, as you ride. We're gonna put the new ones in. The second one done. So with both calipers overhauled, we just want to refit these, um, but just into place. We don't actually want to tighten them just yet. Um, and the reason for that will become clear in a minute. Finger tight's fine. 